All right, let's talk about training a little bit. Yes. So advice for newbies. If you were going to, like, say I was just coming into this and maybe I was like your, you know, brother-in-law or like your neighbor or something. And I'm like, oh man, I really want to do it. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I've got a bunch of savings and I'm going to like, you know, buy some gear and stuff. And what do I got? What's the first step? What should I do? The first step is to find a good licensing company. I mean, somebody... And I won't say names because then that I'll start to get biased. But somebody I who, will adjust your pro. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know I'm a big get fan. Get a discount for uh, we're using code adjuster TV at checkout for a discount on your license. So we have a relationship. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. I mean, I've got a good relationship with them as well, and I got my license through them back in the day as well as 2021 training. I will say that Dave K. Sometimes it is better to get your license in person because you're able to network and you're able to make friends and you're able to find commonalities with people that you never thought before. So it is good to get licensed first because you can't do anything without a license. Right. And I think it's pointless if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, but do the research. There are plenty of Facebook groups and there's plenty of Reddit threads to talk about. And please, for the love of God search bar i cannot recommend the search bar enough this question has been beaten to a pulp don't get me wrong there are differences in times but man that question was probably asked a week ago go ahead and see what other people have said on where to get your license from now do your research though and try to see hey who is this company affiliated with how do they get their start do they have the values that i share and just try to figure out who is going to potentially get you work after. I mean, there are companies out there that license you and then try to get you work because you're an alumni or it's prestigious to go through their training. They might have other training benefits as well, like getting at least X1 certified. Oh, yeah. The basics, they get you the basics and they get your foot in the door and they show you who to work with and go from there. I will say, again, do your research with certifications. There are certifications that are out there that are truly good, that are worth they're salt, but not all certifications are made with the same care and information. Sure. Again, there you've got to worry about, was this person licensed a month ago or a year ago? And now they're just starting to sell their, their snake oil, you know? So <laughs> it, it's a real concern. And I, I just, at the end of the day, you have to do your research because nobody's going to know what's better for you than you yourself. Find a mentor. Finding somebody who's already in the industry yep. can point you in the right direction. Hey, these are the firms that I work with. Or, hey, now that you're licensed, let's go run a claim together. Sometimes you won't get that through the computer, but sometimes you just put yourself out there and you're willing to fail and try to make friends along the way because you never know who could change your life in the course of a, of a conversation. So I, to tie it back, I think... I do think that the Hague certifications do have their place. They are engineers. It is a little boring, but they give you a good basic foundation. And at the end of the day, you're building from the foundation. Yeah. You can't do anything without it. Yeah. So there are plenty of others like the international, I, won't, I don't know, remember all the, the names to it, but the IICRC, a great certification to have is going to be useful up to you. Yeah. I know some people also say, hey, go the staff route. You'll get trained. While that is true, are they going to be teaching you the right things? Are they going to ingrain in you something that is true across the industry, not just in their realm right. of their of, way? Yeah. yeah. And I've seen a lot with a lot of people saying, oh, I can't train an adjuster that's not willing to learn. So, right. but I hope I answered yeah, the certifications. Yeah, sure. I think, yeah, as far as training and certification goes, it's, it's this is and this is an important point that you made, and that is, is that... You know, there are things that you could go get, um, but are they going to move the needle for you, especially if you have limited resources to start with? Yes. You know, don't just drop all your money on, on certifications. Right. Try to find the free resources. If you join, I mean, Alacrity, for instance, or Pilot, they have a whole training library that's open oh, for man. free. And yeah. it's extensive. I, I'm talking hours long. Weeks. Yeah, you're taking spent, days out of your time. I know time. Pilot spent like a gazillion dollars on their, their yeah. LMS and it's everything is in there. <laughs> and if it's free, it's for me in that case. It, it, it's it, that In that case, it's worth it. You don't want to drop thousands of dollars on training. That may not, you may not see a return on investment immediately. It may be something that snowballs later down the road, but you have to be willing to look at the options available to you sometimes. So yeah. please continue because 
you made an excellent point. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are some people out there that that have like more than enough money to like get every possible certification that there is. But there's sure. there's kind of a small percentage. The licensing first thing is absolutely key. And then I would I would even go a little bit farther and say, once you get that home state or your DHS license, then you need to start picking up. Like get everything from Texas up to like North Carolina, right? Sure, the coast and whatnot. Yeah, all the way across. Coastal you know, licenses. Coastal licenses. Hail, hail, like Midwest. Yes, Midwest. anything in the Midwest. And there aren't that many licenses in the Midwest, right? You got like Oklahoma, Minnesota, Indiana. Yeah. Right. Sometimes they're Arkansas. cheap. Sometimes they're the, the price of a course. It's yeah. You got to be able to see that return on investment, and sometimes you won't see it immediately. But what are you willing to invest in for your future? Yeah, the critical skills are going to be, and you're going to learn through the licensing process. You're going to start to understand policy, which is what we do on the the adjusting side, right? We're not Absolutely. contract contractors don't know jack about policy. PAs can't speak to it. I'm sure they would. Some would say that they're policy experts. Maybe they are. Maybe they aren't. I, I haven't met any that would seem to be super. Anyway, <clears throat> I have good things to say about PA, so I'm not sure. Gonna yeah, that. likewise, beat up on them. Um, but so yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna start picking up policy stuff from, from taking you know from from Dave over at 2021, you know from Adjuster Pro, from whoever, right? The pre-exam, pre-licensing courses that they sell, and they're a couple hundred bucks usually, right? Yeah. Um, so you're gonna learn policy from that. Then you have to learn the software. Gotta learn the software. You, you can't to. do anything else without knowing how to how to load the gun, right? Yeah. And like which which end to point. Code that's, buddy. Yeah. That's exact to me. And stability, right, these days. Um, so those are the two critical things I think everybody should start with. And if they have nothing else, that's a hurricane's bearing down on the coast. And you can get your exact mate level two or even your level one. Level one is like it's I the teach basics it. of the basic. It is more than enough. It's more than most people have out of the gate who've like just they went to like some, you know, like adjust your training course boot camp thing yeah. and they got like a day's worth of like it's more than that. And when you test it, you know, the level two and again, I'm exactly a certified trainer. So I, I teach these things. Level two is just more complex version of level one. Level three is like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So software. Right. And then from there having a fundamental understanding of the claims process overall, because it's, you may have variations between all state and Liberty mutual and USAA and fed NAD, if they're still a thing and all, all the different companies, right. They're going to have their different ways of doing things and they're going to have different platforms that they do them on. Right. Like, so state farms got ECS, Liberty mutual's got navigator, you know, all state next gen. I'm assuming they're still using that. So on and so forth. Right. Some companies use VCA or file track, yeah. But they all basically do the kind of the same thing. They just have completely different dashboards and layouts and UI and UX and all that kind of stuff where the buttons are. Some good companies use exact analysis, right? I mean, they're going to use, which is, I think is pretty easy to use, but you got to learn the overall claims process starting from, and this is what I teach, right? And starting from like when they hand you the stack of claims, what do you do with those? From getting the stack of claims virtually or in, you know, you're probably not getting a real stack of claims, but sure, your, your stack first, to them. <laughs> yeah. As getting your, your first stack, of, your first stack of claims, taking those from, I got them in my hands all the way to, they're giving me money for them. Right. right. That's that's And that's the claims process, right? It's, it's, uh, writing and scheduling. It's, um, first contacts, it's setting them up and documenting and, and, you know, uh, statusing the file basically in Xactimate or whatever platform you're going to use, right? Then it's you're in, doing your inspection, then it's writing your estimate, then it's settling up, right? Policy considerations, so on and so forth. And right? what about customer service as well? Customer service is all in there. It is. And I think that customer service is the foundation. Like if you're getting into this for the money and you have terrible customer service, don't. You're not a people person. Uh, you yeah. can be a, you can become a people person. Yeah. But I mean, you can't fake it. You know, I, I don't think you can it's fake it. It's hard to fake it. Because it's like speaking to somebody like this. It's just all through the right. teeth. You know, it's like you want to be genuine and you want to set the expectations for the policyholder because, I mean, I've heard it in trainings a million times. You want to treat the policyholder like family. You want to make sure that yeah. they're taken care of properly, that you treat it like it's your mom's house, your grandma's house. Yeah. You give them the care and quality. Yeah. But and you can know 
You can know everything there is to know about ExactMit or Guidewire or CMS, but at the end of the day, it's not what you know. And it's, it's, it's really just people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Sure. That's when it comes. Like they, they're like, you know what, man? I, I've connected with you. I trust you. And I'm willing to, to listen to anything you have to say, but it's going to go in through one year and out the other. I just care that you care about this, yeah. you know? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Customer service is, it's, it's the, really the key to the whole thing, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, so we got licensing, we got software, we got the claims process. That's going to get you 90% of the way there. Yeah. Storm hits tomorrow and you got that, you're going to be off to the races. And then oh, you, can, yeah. you can backfill the rest of it. That's when I would say... That's when you start to specialize and like really build your knowledge set and expand your knowledge set with the WRT, you know, with, with the, the Hague stuff I think is, is for damage ID is pretty critical. Yeah. Like being able to identify what the material is. Yeah. I think it's more key for it's an engineering perspective. So sometimes it gets a little muddy with functional damage and whatnot, but, and sometimes it just might play not be outdated. But it's something as sure. opposed to coming into us with nothing at all. Like you've yeah. never touched a roof. You've never even seen a roof up close, you know? Exactly. So, and if, if nothing else, like you said, it's material ID. And especially if you, if you get the Hague books, get the, get the, the physical ones, I think, because you can put, put those in your bag or whatever. I like the PDF just because I can sort through them. But so, yeah. So, but, but the other thing would be like, what does wear and tear look like? What does age look yes. like? What is mechanical damage, you know, or, you know, what is things other than storm damage look like? Right? Yeah, it, it, it's the uh, it's like when you go to a hail claim and you're besides just the roof, you're looking for everything around the house that screams this was caused by hail. Yeah, I want to see the things that lead up to it. Yep. As an adjuster, you need to know more than just how to read an HO3 policy and how to sketch a three level house in exact May. You also need to know how to tell hail damage from wear and tear on composition shingles. The number one resource for damage identification books, trainings, and certifications is Haig Education. Not only that, but they provide building inspection and desk adjuster trainings and certifications as well. These are the guys who make the classic Haig Damage ID books that I used for years to educate myself, my insureds, and quite a few roof sales guys on what is damage that we can pay for, and everything else. Looking at you, bird poop. Get a discount on all books, tools, certifications, and other trainings with the code AdjusterTV at checkout at HagueEducation.com. You know what's boring? Insurance policies. You know what's not boring? More Adjuster TV vids right here.